Yo, this is Xavier White, and you're checking out my boy, David Dwayne. What's going on, everybody? Thank you for tuning back into On Air with your one and only rock star on the mic, David Dwayne, in the place to be in right here and right now. We've got r and recording artist Xavier White with us. Now, if y'all don't know who Xavier is, phenomenal, phenomenal artist. He not only embodies r and with his music, but he mixes it up with some dance and pop, and he's currently got the EP out called Love Questions right now with the single distance if y'all don't have the project you need to download it right now what's going on xavier how you doing what's going on what's going on baby how you doing listen we're so good to have you on the show thanks you know for uh chat with us today yeah man i'm excited man let's talk about some stuff i'm i'm all i'm all yours man absolutely so now let's talk about you know like how you got started with music just in case some that are listening aren't too familiar let's kind of you know just kind of take them back just a, just an inch yeah so uh I got started with music probably around the age of like, you know, seven. You know, I had like this like little family reunion with my with my um my dad's side of the family. They brought me on stage for some random reason and and put me on the spot. I sang some Usher song and uh, all of a sudden people liked it and I enjoyed the I enjoyed the uh, reaction. So I, you know, was just like, you know what, maybe this is something I could do. Since then, I just pursued like just singing around that age, you know, and I started writing maybe around like 16, 17 and just progressively trying to get better and better with my craft and, you know, stuff like that, man. That's amazing. And I mean, you're definitely getting like better, 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 and better, better, like with, you know, each project, each single, like that. What what keeps you motivated? Because I know this business can definitely be very tricky. I mean, you know, I know. Um, And there's a lot of, there's a lot of different trials and tribulations. I mean, from the production side, to the writing side, to the management side, to the label side, to the, you know, just being a regular person also as well. And then just kind of going through the emotions to translate it well within your records yeah um what keeps me what keeps me going man is just like motive like just seeing like the support from family friends and 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 people throughout the world that follow me you know like one person from france would just reach out to me and say hey your music helped me with my relationship or someone from over in like you know like indonesia would say the same thing and i have people speaking to me in different languages and i mm-hmm. have to go on google translate and like try to like figure out what they're saying and i figure out figure out like there's just a lot of people that i'm touching so even if it's one two or ten a hundred or thousand like if it's somebody i'm touching with my music i know i'm doing the right thing i know i'm on the right path towards where i want to be you know Exactly. And I was just about to ask you about this international fan base that you have. I mean, outside of the fact that your music is very is is very spread out. It's not like you're trapped into the box of R&B. You do R&B, but you do mix it up with pop, with some EDM, but it's still got that soul factor of R&B. Um, yeah. Being that you have that fan base that's overseas, it's like that. how does that make you feel um, just kind of being the fact that it's like you're being hit up all different places, you know, you got to translate it sometimes. You got to, <laughs> you know, you got to connect with them. Yeah, it, it's it's really nice, man. It, it it really like puts like it puts the edge. It puts the edge away because I'm like, wow, like I know that I have people in other countries supporting my music, regardless if they even know what it even means. It's just the feeling. I know that I'm giving off a feeling, and that's what I really want to re. That's what I really want to like, you know create with my music not just the words i want people to feel the, the songs as well and, and that comes with also the production uh who produces all predominantly all my music is paul paul couture and he helps out a lot with you know vocal producing and he helps give that energy as well um when uh, uh i need i need it the most and and it definitely like it definitely resonates with like the audience and like the people from around the world and i and it feels so good man honestly it just feels so good not to just have the states supporting me it feels good to have like other people overseas supporting me. right it definitely is a good thing because you never want to be like ah man you know we're just potentially doing shows all across the, co- the country you know you want to have yeah. that feeling of we're doing shows in indonesia we're doing shows in London. We're doing shows in Japan. We're doing shows in Texas. We're doing shows in LA. We're going to Chicago. Of course, we won't touch New York because it's just home base for us. Home but it's base. like you just want to have that well-rounded um, fame base, if you will. You don't want to be like so confined to one area. And some people don't get that as an artist. They're like, oh, you know, I want to, I want to do things local and you know, stay, stay things here. Like, okay, that's cool. That's great. You want to do that. But what's going to expand the brand, sound-wise, look-wise, um, just over. 
overall and you really hone in like you and your team hone into that now just going through the developing process of that was that something that was very easy for you to like kind of understand or did you have your moments and times where you were just like mm, i'm kind of apprehensive about this you know yeah yeah for me it was more of just like finding my my personal my personal like you know like peace like you know I, i've got so many you know when in this industry you have a lot of people in your ear saying you should look like this you should look like that you should act like this you should act like this but at the end of the day it was hard for me to find time for myself and find me and now i believe that i have had that experience where i know who i am and i know who i want to be going forward with my music my voice has never been been really too much a concern with me man back right. in the day maybe like six seven years ago it was but you know over time keep working at it if you have that talent and you keep working at it you know you will obviously break out of that like uh uncomfortability of that uncomfortable excuse me that uncomfortable like zone of like finding your voice and and and, and being yourself and that happened maybe six years ago then i developed more of like a, a writing i, I de developed more better writing and the last but not least thing was pretty much finding myself and i think i've definitely found that and now that i found myself i think you know naturally the universe the people the people that listen uh, people around the world will start to resonate towards my 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 vibe and my my frequency and things like that you know absolutely and i think that's um that's very important that you you know you really took that time to just get out of your comfort zone you know because that can be a yeah. difficult period whether it's the writing or actually getting in the booth sometimes we hold ourselves back to many different forms of life and you don't really like it's like you know that you're doing it but it's like hey i'm going to give this because this is all i'm giving to it at this moment because it's, it's comfortable for me but once you get out of being comfortable and you say okay i'm really really comfortable that i'm doing what's right is the yeah. better sense for me mm -hmm. that's ex that's ex that's exact that's exactly what it is it's it, you need you need to um Man, I wish I wish I I found myself before I found anything else, man. You know, but hey, you live and you learn. Like everything is an experience, man. You're here, here. I feel like every individual here is here to learn about themselves and about the world and about people in general. So I think you know the process and the development of each person is is a storyline for themselves. You know, exactly. So now I've got to ask. With all that being said, and because you've got a project with some zodiac signs too. So are you a Cancer or are you a Gemini? I'm a Cancer. My producer is the Gemini. So it's a, the, the, the story. All right, the story behind that, that was the first EP we dropped. The story behind that is like in, in, in the development, you know, of, you know, putting together an actual project. We, we, me and him would bump heads, man. We, me and, me and Paul, we always mm -hmm. bump heads. But, you know, he's like an older brother to me and he, you know what I'm saying, which is, it's fine to bump heads because it's all about creativity. It's all about being like, this isn't it. Let's put it this way. Let's put it that way. And, you know, it was, it's fun, man. It's fun. And I was just at the end of the day, I'm like, you know what, let's just, because the EP was like, you know, the whole like process was like an interesting process. So I was like, you know, what, just let's just name it Cancer vs. Gemini and call it a day, you know, because it's like the bumping heads of the cancer, being emotional, how I am in the, in the Gemini and... It, it, it was it was just it was the right at that moment it was the right thing to do you know and i feel like it's good that you guys took cancer versus gemini and really conceptualized it for what it was and even from down to the writing and stuff because it makes so much sense when you get personal with r&b and i mean i can tell that you are a true cancer just from this conversation and there's completely nothing wrong with that i know zodiac signs that's number one mm -hmm. But it's important to not be afraid to, you know, be vulnerable with your music and to be and to admit the fact of, hey, you know what, I was really uncomfortable at the time when it came to my music. And now it's like you've reached that point where it's like now, even when I see videos with you performing shows and just singing online, it's like that you don't hold back at all. Never. It's like you're like full fledged. You're like, listen. Let me give it my all, even when it comes to working out, because a lot of artists don't all work out, too. I mean, there's guys saying, hey, you know, let's, let's get into the gym, let's do this. But you're constantly, you know, whether, whether you're in the city, you're running, or you're in the gym, you're constantly working on your fitness and comfortable yeah, man, at that's, working that's at it. Yeah, that's that's a that's just a part of me, man. And if you want to, and if you want to be more logical, that's a part of my brand, man. I feel mm -hmm. like everyone should always be in the in the fitness. That body, everyone, you don't have to have the perfect body, but you know, go out. No. I love. Hey, look, I love party. I love going out. I love having a good time. But 
if you're going to go out, have a good time, man, like why not spend two to three days out of your week after work or doing something, hit the gym for 30 minutes, do some calisthenics, do whatever, man. I just want people to be fit. I want people to be in shape. I want people to live as long as they can. So that's like what I'm about. I'm about that love. I'm about that party life. I'm about everything, man. But it's all about also at the end of the day, keeping that body, which keeps you here on earth in yep. shape. You know what I mean? And like giving your spirit uh, uh, time to rest as well, you know? Exactly. And, and finding good balance too, you know, between, because mm-hmm. hey, you can't, you know, provide good music for yourself or you can't really experience life too much if your health is really not your wealth. Exactly. 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 Big. Big for me, man. Very big. So now, even though you have a, you know, entire new project, we're just, you know, we're just kind of catching people up as we go. You know, just the response from the first project and, you know, the response that you got from media to your fans and actually gaining that fan base. When you think back to that point to now, love questions being the projects like that. How do, how, how does that make you feel? It feels really good, man. It's in, like I said, it's a process. It's about taking time. Like I always believed that I was a late bloomer. You know, I, mm-hmm. I you know, late bloomers are just late bloomers, man. You just deal with it. It's, it's your process. Certain people, it takes certain time for certain people to be where they want to be. And I'm just waiting for my time, man. It's, it's not, it's just a learning experience. It's right. all about just being, just keep going at it and not stop. You know, it's just keep going and not stop and keep motivating yourself. Keep finding time to know more about yourself. Keep keep you know experiencing like a a lifestyle and being a part of a lifestyle and sooner or later it will resonate to the universe and you know i'm all about giving back to that and like the almighty god and you know i'm saying like just praying and you know things like that you know it'll happen for you you know what i'm saying that's what it is you know at the end of the day and you show a lot of growth um between the first project to now love question and growth is a big thing for cancers like that what would you say you had to experience just going through just to get to this project now a lot of a lot of downfalls uh but you know like it, it, a lot of downfalls but you know what know what i could say out of all that it was it everything is i, I believe god has made a blueprint for everybody mm-hmm. you know there's already a blueprint for every single person on earth. And I believe that that blueprint will be followed regardless of if you don't want to follow it or not. It's going to have letdowns. You're going to have come ups. You're going to also have a letdown, a come up, a letdown. You just got to learn to just be strong and deal with it, man. You just got to you just got to you just got to live your life to the fullest, man. Have a good time, explore, learn, experience and enjoy. And I felt like that time and that process between Cancer vs. Gemini and Love Questions, that was that. And I feel like this, where I'm at now, is now the point where I'm, I, I feel the opportunity arising. And I'm going to have that opportunity soon. Very, very soon. And I feel it. I don't yeah. know why I feel it. I don't know why, but I just, you just kind of feel something different. You know and, why you feel it? Because you've been consistently working at it. And everything, yeah. like your whole ent- entire process, and then this is just me, you know, making a, a a clear observation of what anybody can see too is that you've gone through the process. You've not <laughs> rushed anything. Everything has been very organic, even from the organic build of you know your artist development to the media yeah. covers. You know, like it's not been a, it's not been like quick, 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 quick. It's it's been a slow. You know, progression, if you will, a, a real, yeah. a real growth, and a yeah. lot of artists don't understand. Also, you have to make moves, and things will happen in time if you allow it. Not everything mm-hmm. is going to happen like bloop, 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 bloop. Yeah. You're yeah. not going to be, you're not going to be featured on Milk Air. You're not going to be on a, a Spotify playlist. You're not even going to trend on the damn playlist. Yeah, man, you gotta. It, it's exactly, man. You gotta just learn how to just go with the moves, go with the roll with the punches, man. roll with the punches mm-hmm. so now let's talk about say my name that's actually my absolute favorite from the project i love the approach let's just talk about you know the, the concept of the record and you know how yes, it connected say, say my name it was uh it was man there, there was this, there was this girl i won't say her name <laughs> <laughs> you won't say her name, name but you want her to say your name got it <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> But um, there was this person that I was I was very much enjoying at the time during summer. Um, 
it was very it was very unique it was a very unique experience with this person and all of a sudden she went back home uh she went back home and all of a sudden she stopped texting calling i felt like i got played mm. and, and New your girl and it was, you know, it was kind of like a summer fling, but I thought I wanted it. I wanted it to be like my girl, you know. So uh. it was, just, it was, it was a fling, but I was kind of looking at it to being a a, a ting. Yeah, <laughs> so like I, if things you want to be a thing. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, man. So I, I, uh, I was hoping that she would text me back. I kept texting her. I was, I was being thirsty, I guess, because I was like, why isn't this girl hit me back? And I, and all of a sudden, I found out she actually had another man Ooh. in my and i'm like damn you know so say my name was pretty much like damn can i get another opportunity for you to even say that like right give me what give me what you gave me in new york you know give me what you gave me in new york and i was just wishing she would uh she would just text me or call me back or do something that you know hit me on my instagram my timeline and she just nothing Whoa. Know, was just so it was like it was like one of those and uh, that's how that that's how that one went, man. And I mean, great inspiration for a record, like serious great inspiration, because I mean, people go through that. You know, when you it's a it's a summer thing, it's a winter thing, it's you know it's you know boot up season or what what whatever it is. I'm single as hell, so I don't know what any of this shit is. To be more than honest, I'm just so tunnel vision. But you know, <laughs> <laughs> it's all these different seasons where everybody's like, okay, cool, you know, let's, right? let's do this, let's you do You know that. what I'm saying? <laughs> and then and then it's like, oh shit, now you're oh. not serious anymore. Oh. You're not even. Yeah, you hit me back. <laughs> oh man! So it's such a relatable record, and I think that it's it's really amazing that um you know it was on it was featured with title on their um R and B playlist and stuff like that, and it just kind of took off from there. And the fans even you know really were feeling it's like that when you just think about how connecting this record something very personal, very true that that, that realistically happened to you, and then just kind of seeing the response of that, like just what goes through your mind is like were you thinking that this record would get that type of placement that it did or were you just kind of like you know what we can run with it put on the project and see where it takes us or you were like you know what i'm confident that it's gonna be it i don't know man i was just i have my i have my team that you know goes over the records and you know i I, there was they they they, they uh, wanted to review it with me, and I reviewed it, and I just really thought that that record would would resonate because it was something truthful. You know, it was not like a made up song; you know, it was something real. So I knew that somehow it would work, and it did. Right, and it's a good thing that it did work, and it was something that was real because people can only connect with things that real. I mean, they connect. Yeah, with exactly. Yeah, exactly. Especially when mm-hmm. it comes to R and B. Yeah, oh, real, yeah. real R and B at that. Not like uh. I'm not going to name drop any artists. That yeah. real arm, but we, we, we know who they are. Yeah, um, yeah. But back to Xavier, who's doing real r and like that. And I think that that's what people can appreciate about um, this project is that you do that. And especially with Say My Name, it's just like real, 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 real heartfelt. So it's like, damn, for real? I felt that way just last week. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And especially exactly. when you when me and you talking about you know, the inspiration behind it, I think about something to a time recently and I'm just like, damn, like, so we're all not uh, mm-hmm. the only ones that are going through this. It's, it's other people. Other no one people, talks about it. They're afraid to talk about their emotions. The, uh, you know, at a time like we, we live in it now, people want to cover it up with the same kind of trap sounds. I love trap, though. I ain't going to lie, but too much of it gets too overplayed in my eyes mm-hmm. yeah it definitely does because it's like everybody wants to do it everybody is not even in a lane of their own it's like everybody's the same lane you can put all these new people or some new people and old people and just put them all into one it's like why why can't i compare y'all so yeah because it's crazy because I, I i i really like it but when it's so much of the same sound i'm like make something else yep. come man. Dang, y'all are doing the same thing and these labels keep putting this out because it's quick money but that's just gonna always change it's mm-hmm. like I feel like music it's gonna be played out it's gonna be played out soon it's always gonna be played out soon you can only go so long with something that sounds so much the same you know so i hope i hope that they know what they're doing though mm-hmm. yeah. they know what they're doing yeah so you know hopefully that'll change soon we'll get back
back to some like good music, good vibes, and some good times for at least a couple more years. Hell yeah. But you're bringing it. You're bringing it with this project. Everybody needs to download, support, and follow you and stuff like that. And I think what's also another favorite of mine from the project, I, it's not that I think so. I know so that it is. It's um the actual title track. I love the flow of it. I love the... The cadence of the video is very colorful. It's like mid colors and stuff like that, but it really get it, it really sets a mood for this yeah, project. Uh, Creatively, when it comes to your visuals, do you write your own treatments and work with a vi- uh, video I director work, that does I that? I work with the director sometimes, and I work with my guys, and, and we figure out something to, something that can like kind of relate and correlate with the actual track. And what we do is we come brainstorm, come up with something, see if it works. If it doesn't, we go back and fix it you know so like we do try to put those measures together to make both things resonate and like work together now that's what's up and with this particular video how did you um actually i'm not even talking about that video i mean only it's only you has the colors with the blues and everything mm. else i'm exactly about that video for that video in particular what we, we can still talk about the uh, distance music video as well too but just or fuck it both of them when you think about just the color contrast between them both was it was it very important to um hone into a different mood setting if you will for each track i would say it was and um i want all my songs to have some type of mood and pretty much both both me both all three music videos uh had very beautiful colors and we try to resonate the colors with the song and do as much as we can with the budget we had and we did it i, I believe that all three music videos came out as good as they could Mm -hmm. i think it's resonating on youtube and it's it's working you know and i hope more people go there and more people check it out and more people follow yeah i mean the numbers are crazy not even just on the the streaming platform of spotify and title and apple music it's crazy but like you said it's doing well as far as the streams are with videos I, i really feel like this project is clearly speaking for itself like it's literally speaking for itself conceptual wise it literally follows the track. It's not like it's far off. It's very within it. And it looks good. Whatever the budget is, it works. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> exactly, man. We're doing what we're doing. And that's, and that's an, a, an important thing, too. Like, you don't have to have such a major budget. Wow. No, I mean, man, you, you, you should spend money. Talent. You should, you know, of course, have the talent and spend the money. But there's mm-hmm. a way of spending money. In this mm-hmm. business, and I think yep. there's a lot of misspending. You know, the yeah. labels be having all this money to just you know splurge something like because they have it. It's like, okay, great, you you're paying you know five thousand on a B roll guy just for a listening party. No shade, I'm not mm-hmm. gonna throw names at any record labels that do that, but we know who does that. Um, <laughs> but it's like <laughs> you don't have to do it, but they do it because they have it. But then when it's an independent artist such as yourself, it's like, hey, we might have half of that. We might even have half of half of that. We might have one third of that, basically, to really make it go and look good. Because all it is is about is that how that can- how the-, the quality of that camera and that edit. Because you can make That's anything. It. You can make anything go. Exactly. It's just about the quality. Exactly. You're damn right. You're damn right. And I-, and I can appreciate that, that you provide quality with your videos and you think, you think about it in this not just like okay let's just let's just drop a video to each song because you can easily do that to the project are you actually thinking about doing that because that would actually would be pretty fire what did you say i said are you thinking about shooting a video to each track because that would actually be pretty dope i think yeah i believe we are I, our game plan is definitely to shoot a video to each of them yeah i think you should i think y'all should definitely should because this is a really great project where it needs full full experience yeah, it's all the visual, visuals. Mm-hmm. And I mean, they definitely get a full experience when they check you out on tour, doing shows in New York, is like that, which they have to, that they haven't. Like, it's like an absolute must, 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 mm-hmm. must. Let's talk about your favorites from the project, because I think that's very important. And, you know, just kind of to like really for people to kind of tap in if they just want to, you know, check out a few and go on, you know, through the whole catalog. Which top three are your favorite from the project? And would you recommend like for everybody to just go ahead and be like, check these out right now and then get into everything else? I would say first and foremost, check out uh, Distance, then check out Love Questions and Floating. Mm. Those are my top three for sure. I definitely say floating is in my top three. I'm kind of like going, I keep going back and forth between each day. I feel like it definitely depends on the mood. The but mood, I def- very important. Yeah. Very important. The mood is very important. But I definitely say floating and like distance are always like top two. Mm-hmm. 
and it like goes back and forth. Now, top three changes like really bad. But I think though, I think people tapping into those records, um, they'll get it. They'll get a sense of you know a little bit about you too from those records, and you know just a different side and tapping into your artistry. So those are great records for people to check out. But they need to download the whole project regardless and check out all your music. So now, do you have any upcoming shows that we can look out for? Because I think um, we are going to start setting up shows um, next month. So just be on the lookout on my social medias like Twitter, Instagram, and uh, Spotify. We're going to start setting up some shows for um, the month of July and August. And, and people could definitely come and support and uh, stop out and see how the, those shows are, you know, and, uh, and come out and support and, and show love. Man. I'm looking forward to that. I'm looking forward to that. Are there any particular cities that you want to um, hit? On this I would side? I would say I definitely want to hit LA, man. That's like my my number one goal is to hit LA. Oh yeah, yeah. You've got to do LA, especially do like a um a very intimate show too. Oh my gosh, that would be lit. That would be super lit. <laughs> definitely yeah. gotta do LA. What other cities? I would love to do Atlanta. I've never been there. So I would definitely love to do Atlanta for sure, too. And with, because I see you actually do kind of preview some of your rehearsing a little bit, too, on your socials and stuff like that. Are you always just practicing, you know, just your show performance or you're just always, you know, like we, we, we need be to tap into like rehearsal mode for you? Well, I, so for my rehearsals, man, it's just like how comedians, famous comedians, they still go to comedy shows just to rehearse in front of small audiences and just perform their, their skits, you know, and I, I look at it the same way. I'm, you know, I do the same thing, man. I always got to be consistent. I always got to, I, I don't ever want to have dust on my shoulders, man, when I'm performing. I always want to be in front of a crowd. I always want to feel comfortable in front of a crowd. I never want to have like no stage fright. Right. That's why I, uh, I perform as many shows as I possibly can to like mm-hmm. get Stage. Yeah, and it's good that you keep that consistent with performing so like that. That way that you don't and you're like, you know what? I can perform any day, any night. And even if y'all want to say, hey, do you want to, you know, do a pop up next week and do open for so and so or do a show? You're always ready. And I think that that's very important. You just always have to be ready. Always yes. know, always know your, of course, you know, know your craft, know your, your staging direction when it comes to performing. Like knowing, hey, this is, this is the, we have the live music ready. We do have a band that if we need to do a band or hey, if I need to play on key or pull out a guitar, we do this all track. Hey, that's what's going to happen. And mm-hmm. I think that's amazing that you're always you know, focus and tap in to your artistry from rehearsing to writing to being in a studio. Like you, you don't stop. And you're a very serious artist. And I think people can appreciate that about you. Mm-hmm. That's right. That's right, baby. So Xavier, I've got to say thanks so much for, uh, and we definitely appreciate, you know, chatting with you about the project, you know, just how you got into the business. So I think that's very, um, this interview can definitely help a lot of people too, you know, who want to get into the business, whether they've, you know, had a little bit of experience in it already, or if they really want to tap in because i think um you're a good model of an artist that is really doing it independently that is making it work to his best advantage being yeah. featured on different playlists and different huge sites and still keeping it going while mm-hmm. maintaining your fitness and you know being true to yourself yeah man it, i want to i want to motivate people that is my main goal man is to motivate people i could change a life each day man i know i'm doing god's work well you definitely are so know that you're doing god's work and then some and that you just got to keep at it, keep at it like I know you will. Mm, thank you, man. Thank you for the opportunity as well to be on this. I really appreciate that. Absolutely. You're welcome any, 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 any time to come back. Of course, like that. You know, we'll definitely do a s- sit down interview, talk more about the music and depths like that. But I feel like this is, this, we did, a, we talked about a lot in a short period of time, even though it really wasn't that short. <laughs> but we covered a lot, though. I just yeah. I just talk too damn much. Sometimes I'd be like, listen, David, you in this show, at some point you have to tune yourself out. No, it's good. It's all good. <laughs> so before we have you do a, um, a few drops for us, let people know where they can follow you, like on your social media, and then, you know, download the project. Uh, you can follow me on my social media on Twitter or Instagram, and it's at I am Xavier White. Uh, you could stream my music on Spotify, download my music on iTunes, stream my music on Tidal, and yeah. Yo, this is Xavier White, and you're checking out my boy David Dwayne.